shot hole from when they blasted the tunnels because obviously when the Victorians did it they were using gunpowder or black powder and the drill you'll see them all over the mine in the Victorian part of it. If you look back you can see a line yeah, of uh, shot yeah. holes all the way down to Gary. Is that seven or eight of them? Yeah. As you can see, this bit of the mine was um, dug by children um, because, as you notice, that it's quite low here, the ceiling. Um, obviously, that didn't go on throughout the whole mine because eventually kids weren't allowed to like work down the mines. Um, so, as you go further along on, along the tunnel, you notice that the ceiling gets higher, and which is where it starts being dug by sort of men. So. Um, if you look just up there, you can see where the roof's been enlarged by um, adults, so it's easier for them to get through. Because obviously kids are a lot shorter than adults, which made it quite tricky to get all in and out. They kept banging their heads, so obviously they've enlarged it to make access easier. Finding all this silver yeah. oh, to and get more you. money from the shareholders, and they weren't. They, what they were doing was robbing the large, like he says, the eyes of the mine, what the old men had left to support the mine. Um, yeah, took every, took every last little piece. Every single little bit. They could Up there, little rigs, you can see that's a stemple that was used for putting posts in. One end of the post to go in there, and then the other would go up there, top there, the other side. So you think it could be put across and that sort of stuff. Just here, you can see a pole. This post just here, this big wooden one, that's obviously support, helping to support the roof of mine. That's actually an original post. That was in here when we came down and obviously it's still in good condition and working so we haven't taken it off and replaced it. Douglas fir. Douglas fir. Douglas fir, is it? Yeah. yeah. So because they last a long time and they can like sit in water. Flowers hole. Um, this was discovered a while ago, and the French came in. They surveyed it, and they said that it was backfilled, right from the back where we are, right the way forward to the end of the tunnel. Um, so they tried digging it out, but they gave it up. So then Max put in these this structure here um, to try and four pole our way through. Uh, beans will now tell you what four polling is. So as Sam started explaining earlier, four polling, it's four sides obviously, four meaning forward, you have your frame, normally made of timber, but in this case because it was quite small we decided to make it out of scaffold poles. Get your speeding boards, you dig, 
drive them forwards so it stops that from the shaft above dropping down on us. Then as you dig more, you drive the spilling boards forwards, building your frame as you go along. And then when you get the end of the spilling boards, you drive another spilling boards on, and then that's four poling. We know this tunnel was drilled, dug from the other way, because if you look just to the side here, there's shot holes drilled into the rock, and they face the opposite way to the way we came in. Yeah. Um, Peter Clawton also came up and said that this might possibly have been here earlier, but just being extended, because if you look on the other wall, there's no shot holes or anything like that, which suggests that it was enlarged. here, but it was enlarged. Here we are in the collapsed stope, which joins Flowers Hole and Raymond's Gallery. A stope is a mined out area, open area between two levels. Um, just up here, we see the slate has been pushed together and has sort of gone up, has sort of moved in an upwards trajectory. This is a very good example of how continental plates push together and create mountain ranges such as the Himalayas and the Alps. And the Alps. Um, this here is a bit of ditch walling that myself and Mitch did. Um, ditch walling is obviously where st stones are used to make a wall, but no cement used. They're slotted into place with each other. Um, behind this, there's an old entrance that leads up to the surface, but it kept spilling down, and the only safe way to contain it really was to put a wall there. Because it opens up onto somebody else's land, and we not allowed to go up there. Can we film these? Um, yeah, so just here, on the ground, when we first came down here, there was um, kids' footprints that had obviously been working down the mine, and next to them there was two old tin cans, a large one and a smaller one, um, they'd probably bought like their lunch or something like that down and ate them, but they obviously left them behind. And when they collapsed the mine, they've been preserved. Um, we managed to get them out, and they're now in our museum up top at the moment. So here we have the clay. Where we have, you talked about it earlier on, we have the miners have the clay on the head, helmet and the candle attached to that. So when they were not working, they would take the clay off, attach it to the wall, the candle in there, work away in there so it's not on the head, we're about hitting it off. It's just easier to have it out of the way. Thank you for following us on our tour. We are now at the end of the 15 Fathom East. Right, like I say, it's been the squeezing through this piece, but this is only one of two yeah. small pieces. Can I pass you the camera yeah. through? It's not like that, Brilliant. Well, right, you're out of the Victorian mine now. Um, we've had an expert in here, and some of the pick marked have been dated back to the 11th century in this part of the mine. We don't know how old it is, but it's certainly way pre-Victorian. So you can see we're about to build huge great stone and brick pillars to put back the eyes of the mine to support it and stop it collapsing. And so those, those are removed by, removed by the Victorians just yeah. to get that last little bit of the ore. Yeah. Right, um, this brick, bit of brick here, um, Roger Burton put this in, it took him absolutely years to do it. Um, so this bit of the mine is actually called Roger's Castle. Just let's lay the wall and that. Just to the side here, just there, that's a, um, another walled up tunnel, that's a really old entrance as well. Like the one we previously saw down the bottom, but like that one, that's on also on someone else's land, so we're sort of unable to do anything with that. 
at the moment. The same as up there next to Hannah. That's also a walled up entrance, but that too leads on someone else's land. So we've had to block it off and we can't go up there. That predates the shaft, that's the original but, way down. Yeah, these are the original ways down, so they all predate the actual shaft itself. So, okay. um, This bit down here is quite a small shaft. It was probably dug by a boy, a young boy or something. Um, obviously you can only fit one person down there at a time, because obviously how small it is. Um, so that would explain that it was quite an old part of the mine as well. Obviously we know it's quite old, but that's a bit of an evidence for it. Because yeah, the modern mines, uh, men dug them, because boys weren't allowed to. Yeah, it was, uh, um, the, the mine is back to front, you see? The nearer the surface you are, um, the further, the older you get, because um, the further down you go, the newer, newer it is. Um, yeah, so you can see the cross course, because it run, runs along here, um, and it's also across a cut. Um, a cross course is where the rocks have moved naturally, and a cross cut is where it's been man-made, it's been sort of manually dug out. And minerals are in the cross course, so they've used a cross cut to get to them. Uh, this is um, Harris's shaft, that was the actual digging shaft. Um, William shaft is the one we went in other, earlier on, that's the pumping shaft.